stream. Sorry, live stream. Set button. Say hello to Mr. Sacco. <laughs> oh man that's a little humor there <laughs> mm -hmm. all right looks like we're live so we are live guys this is we're back again uh this is yeah. indie talk with jesse and jaren featuring the golden lion lennox leon how's it going lennox so far, so good. that's good How yeah. You guys? Yeah. Yeah. doing good yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome to finally get you on here. I've been doing some research and you definitely look like you've had a pretty good career and seem like a good guy. So definitely excited for this. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I, I've been trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I know we're on a time crunch, so we'll just uh, we'll go uh, start right away. So uh just talk about how you got into watching wrestling and then uh, your early training of becoming a wrestler. Well, um, I was born and raised in uh, Arkansas. Uh, I was born in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I was uh, raised in Clarendon for part of my childhood. And that was when I uh, started watching wrestling with my father. He got me uh, watching wrestling every Saturday morning. It was funny, he uh, tried to... Um, he would try to wake me up, and I wouldn't wake up. But then when he'd say wrestling is on, I'd jump right up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And um, eventually, I was going to college in Arkansas at uh, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, which was a pre predominantly black college. And the weekend I had away from college, I went with my dad to another wrestling event. And um, there was a USWA, it was a Power Pro wrestling event, because USWA and Power Pro were in between um, promotions, so it was mm -hmm. kind of uh, in the Memphis area promotion in mm -hmm. Mississippi at the casino in January 1998. And I was uh, watching the matches, and I was actually sizing up the guys <laughs> to see if I, could, if I was tall enough or if I was big enough to get in there. And by intermission, I was actually approaching some of the people I, who I was assuming were running the show to, you know, ask how I could get in it. Mm -hmm. So I started researching wrestling schools, and eventually I settled upon Columbus, Ohio, and I saw um, Wild Bull Miller's school, mm -hmm. and he passed away, I think, a couple years ago. And um, mm -hmm. I actually had a free tryout. And it was only twelve hundred fifty per month. Well, twelve hundred fifty total. It was like fifty about fifty dollars a month, mm. totaling up to twelve hundred fifty dollars in training. So it was relatively cheap. So it was just you know to get my foot in the door. And then later on, I started training at OVW about maybe five or six years later. Oh okay. Oh, he did OVW. There you go. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, 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 Jesse. So, who was your uh, most favorite wrestler to wrestle in OBW? My favorite wrestler, or the favorite guy to wrestle was um, oh, there's a lot of them. Um, <laughs> one of, I think it was either it was between, um. Well, I didn't wrestle Mondo in OVW. I actually teamed with him once mm -hmm. uh, when he was part of the Spirit Squad. But uh, Deuce mm -hmm. and Domino, when they were right before they were about to be called up to WWE, um, Jimmy mm -hmm. Sneaker Jr., who was Deuce, yep. was one of the coolest guys in developmental to me. He was one of the yeah. nicest guys there. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know you did uh, OVW work. That's definitely super cool to hear. Yeah, we had uh, a couple weeks. No, I, no, it was a couple months ago now. Uh, man, so many shows to keep track of. But uh, a couple months ago, we had a uh, OVW referee, James Heinecker, and he was talking about like, those early days of OVW. So it's cool to hear about OVW. And obviously, it's still doing pretty good as of right now. So, yeah. Uh, my personal opinion was uh, it, it was better back then than me, but it was starting to kind of mm -hmm. go down as far as uh, 
developmental down there. You'll start yeah. to go downhill after Cornette left. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is it. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. Uh so uh you did some work in uh Minnesota earlier this year. You were part of the the Midwest All-Star Wrestling TV tapings. Uh, uh, how was it being a part of that? So really cool to be back on TV again. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And hopefully they can, you know, get things going again for uh, MAW TV tapings. And uh, I love the, po the podium interviews because it gave, yeah. me, gave me kind of a, it, it felt surreal. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh during the tapings i believe this taping just came out but uh you betrayed uh rampage santana do you want to <laughs> talk about how that all went about went about <laughs> well um, i was brought in to uh, serve as a mentor to rampage mm -hmm. and though i still think he has potential um I figured, you know, uh, he seemed like he could do better without me, and apparently he has since he's a TV champ now. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he has something that I, I would want now. So uh, oh. if we uh, wrestle again, I figured uh, when I turned on him, I figured um, it would be great to, uh, for him to learn while standing across the ring from me. Because you can learn from your opponents just as much as you can from your partners. So um, when, yeah. when we get in there, school's going to still be in session. Mm -hmm. It never stops anyway. Mm -hmm. And it will continue when we stand across the ring from one another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely would like to see one-on-one -on -one Rampage versus Lennox on a, a regular MAW show or the TV tapings again. So that would be definitely really cool to see it. Yeah, it'll, it'll one of those. Any way it goes, I'd be ready. Mm -hmm. And I hope he'd be ready, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been training a lot. We've he's been posting a lot of videos. He's getting bigger and stronger. So he's he's definitely uh, getting a lot better now. So I think I think he would uh, be a good match for Lennox down the line. Mm -hmm. That I've always been confident of. He's, oh, he's had a lot of ability, mm -hmm. and he's got a great look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he's got a ton of potential to go as far as he wants. Plus, he was already trained by Ken Kennedy, who was also yeah. had some OVW experience. Yeah, so, that's right. Um, and a name on top of that. So um, sometimes being connected to someone who's been a part of the show, the main shows, mm -hmm. an international superstar, that actually helps you get very far. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Jesse? So what do you think of the feud between the system and MAW Commissioner Brian Sager? Well, I think uh, the system is um, he's taking a chance, but sometimes you got to take a chance in, in the wrestling world and uh, hopefully this chance pays off for him because he's He's messing with someone who's part of the office. There's always been a separation between the boys in the office in the wrestling world. And uh, this feud is going to highlight that. And uh, it's going to highlight it in a negative way on Systems' part. Because Brian Sager is supposed to, uh, he's been positioned as a good guy in this situation. But um, I'm cheering for the system. Mm hmm Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was looking at, uh, through your Facebook, and uh, seems like a few years ago, I, I believe the year was 2017. Uh, uh, WWE Money in the Bank. You were part of the security team or a tech team, and there's a picture of Baron Corbin like stalking you down. Uh, what was it like being around Baron Corbin during that night? Corbin was uh, he was. He was pretty cool. We were, uh, it was mostly a business thing. You know, he was, uh, it was, uh, pretty, I was actually the quote unquote cameraman. Oh, the camera guy. Okay. 
So he uh he he shoved me and snatched my camera from me. Oh, that's what he did. Okay. Yeah, I saw the headset. I'm like, you got to be. Um, I wasn't sure if it was security with the headset, but I was thinking maybe tech or something. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah was camera guy. Uncle cameraman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Here's a joke. Um, Ryan James, when he was producing a segment uh, before the doors opened, he was actually uh, he he said, "Hey, camera kid, that's your name." <laughs> you're making a shit ton of money <laughs> <laughs> oh man mm -hmm. yeah yeah the camera camera kid there you go camera kid <laughs> camera kid lennox leon there you go mm -hmm. yeah uh and then uh oh uh tell us a good wrestling story you have oh <laughs> wow well, it's actually quite a few. Um, one, a lot of them I have from like outside the ring. Um, mm -hmm. Like there's uh, one where um, I actually have a positive story about CM Punk. I know he's had some negative press lately. Mm -hmm. but, um, I have a positive uh, story about him as far as a racial issue. We were um in a we were actually outside just outside the building at a house show in uh mm -hmm. eastern Kentucky somewhere. Mm -hmm. This was our first few months in the uh, in OVW. He was of course the difference being he was on a contract and I was just uh I wasn't. But uh, we were at a house show outside the building together and there was some uh some white guys down there, they were uh I think they were talking of you know a bunch of trash to some of the black wrestlers, me and myself included. Mm -hmm. And I got wind of it. I didn't hear of it so much. I didn't pay as much attention, but Punk heard it. And mm -hmm. um, you know, he was, you know, he was right beside me when he said this, and it was like uh, you know, saying how ignorant they were, you know, just because, you know, these guys were just because we were black, they shouldn't be uh, you know, talking smack to us like that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a no matter how he's how he's been and stuff like that as far as uh you know from you know his attitude i've always respected that about him mm -hmm. yeah 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 i think yeah, i mean obviously negativity but i think deep down he he does mean well he's just i don't know kind of in a bad headspace but he's hearing a story like that is definitely good to hear and especially times like this so yeah uh, uh jesse so do you think uh now that cm punk uh i mean we've been hearing stories that he is uh out of aew what what is your take on that well my take was uh you know, they, uh, I think they chose that life. That was, Punk was, uh, he was, you know, he was, he, he was highly opinionated for years. They knew that. And he was happy being away from wrestling for seven years. Mm -hmm. And then he back. And a year later, you're having trouble. Well, you know, I'm, I've kind of shrugged my shoulders at that. Cause I'm like, well, you got, you know what you were getting. Right. You chose this life. And if you're not, you know, doing up to if you don't perform up to his up to his standard, that's what you're getting, and that's actually how it was with a lot of old school guys. And right. He's not much different from some of them, especially since uh, he was he's been he's been around them since almost the early part of his career. Mm -hmm. and especially when you know we were in OVW, he definitely got the well actually before then when he was in ROH. You know, there'd be some old school guys that would come around there. Mm -hmm. You know, they, uh, you know, they punk is punk, and you get what you get. And they should have known that when they when they signed him. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why he was gone for seven years mm -hmm. by his own religion, you know, by his own choice. Mm -hmm. was, he chose that life, and they wanted to bring him back so bad. And, well, you get what you get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll never hate on Punk because of you know the story I just relayed to you, but mm -hmm. you know uh, 
there's some guys I know in the Chicago area that have, you know, had some heat with him because of his mouth. And yeah. he can say, some, you know, he can say some stuff that uh, make you want to fight him. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I've heard stories about that. But, um, you know, that, whenever they uh, bring in people that are known to have had some sort of issues with or bad attitudes, like Austin Aries is another one. Mm. I'm like, well, oh, yeah. You want them in there, you know, if you you get what you get. And if you don't like it, you just you know, you part ways. You just you, all right. <laughs> you can handle it. Yeah. He's talented. You know, both men are talented. They're mm-hmm. highly opinionated. So if you can deal with that, then go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh seems like Jesse had a tech or a connection issue, but hopefully he'll join in a sec. I'll just keep going with it. But uh, uh, so you've been uh, I've I've seen uh, you've had a couple titles. Uh, what was your favorite run as uh being champion, and which uh company was that? My favorite run was uh, Jesse Owens. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was working for Reno Riggins in Nashville, Tennessee, back mm-hmm. in uh, 2008, mm-hmm. I was oh, okay. uh, tagging with a guy named uh, Ben Wood, who went by the Indian Outlaw. Excuse mm-hmm. me. And we had a, we actually had a, a really good run there, mm-hmm. and we won the titles from Corey Williams and Br- Vic the Bruiser down mm-hmm. there, and uh, Vic was one of my favorite opponents. Oh. wrestling mm-hmm. and reno was one of my favorite people to work for oh okay yeah yeah there you go the uh, promotion was called uh oh yeah southern all-star wrestling and we were tag team champs down there mm-hmm. okay yeah there you go all right looks like jesse's back jesse welcome back jesse <laughs> oh, thank you, sorry about that my headphones kicked on um oh, yeah. so was uh Batista and Brock Lesnar and John Cena and OBW at the time that you were there? Uh by the time I got to OBW, they had already um they had already left. They were already Cena and Batista were already uh WWE and yep. world champions respectively. Because mm-hmm. this was an old fire when I came in and uh I later got to see Lesnar. Lesnar was already out of wrestling at this point. Yep. I think trying to uh, go into either football or UFC. Yeah. I later got to see Lesnar back in 09 when I was in OVW. He came by mm-hmm. to visit backstage. Mm-hmm. And Cena came by OVW. He uh, did the last Six Flags show we did against yep. Harrison Cade. And I mm-hmm. met him backstage there. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it looks like we got a few minutes left. I know you're on your, your work break, so we'll respect that. Yes. Uh, and uh, we'll definitely try to get you again. I know we were having some issues, so uh, I'll go with uh, try to get a couple more in. Uh, um, sh- uh, how was it working with uh, Impact Wrestling star Congo Kong? <laughs> the joy. We actually first met in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Um, and we did like the, uh, you know, a little custom show where um, we did matches strictly for video and not in front of a paying audience. And, mm. But uh, later on, I got, we had to work each other in Ohio in the Dayton area for a small promotion. And uh, the promotion was owned by Double P. That guy was pretty cool. I like that guy. Um, mm-hmm. But it was a, it was awesome to work with him in an actual you know in a match in front of paying customers too. Mm-hmm. Um, he's made he's made uh, most of my trunks nowadays in the last three years, oh, the last okay. three or four years, mm-hmm. and a couple of my robes. So uh, great gear maker, and he's actually a he's a guy that he's got a. Great grasp on psychology too, on ring psychology. 
And he, yeah, he, he's one of the, one of my favorite opponents too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we'll go with uh, one last question here. Uh, uh, what was uh, just talk about what the future of Linux is and uh, future events you got coming up? Future events. Um, this Saturday, um, I'm gonna get to meet Ric Flair one more time. This time, you'll actually see me in a match. Uh, this will be in Galesville, uh, Wisconsin. At the Riverside Resort there for River City Championship Wrestling. I'm tag team champion there with Aaron Arsenal. And we're going to be defending our titles that night. Mm -hmm. okay. And then also, um, I'm going to be uh, later on this month. For, yeah, this Saturday, October 22nd, is, is going to be that match. And then on the 29th, I'm going to be in, uh, I'm gonna be in Waterloo, Wisconsin for a frozen tundra wrestling and a triple threat match for the cruiserweight championship. Okay. okay. And then uh, October 30th, I'm gonna be uh, possibly working either in the Chicago area or once again for our MAW and uh, hopefully a, a Warriors TV taping. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're yeah, I got a lot of stuff lined up for November as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like you'll be pretty busy then. Definitely have some work going on. So yeah. And uh we uh yeah, we hope to be able to see you at one of the shows. We we're in the Minnesota area. We go to the, the MAWs and uh uh cut like steal the main and stuff, and then I'm up. Uh, up north a little bit in like Fargo, North Dakota. So if you ever come up here for a show, that'd be pretty cool. But so, yeah. I'd love to do a show in North Dakota. I'd like to wrestle there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just have you talk to Nick Stokey or something. He'd be pretty, pretty cool. It would be pretty cool to get you up to below zero wrestling or something. So, yeah. Below zero wrestling. I won't remember. I'm going to remember that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Below zero wrestling. Okay. Sounds good, but uh, yeah, I think uh, it was awesome talking to you. I know it was a uh, cut short, uh, but I think I think you definitely deserve to be on again. We were able to get some good stuff here, uh, here and got a uh, couple couple viewers on here. But I know we'll post it up and uh, they'll be able to watch it uh, uh again. So yeah, and um. Uh... I think next time I'll be on, I'll be available Friday about this time, too. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we could do a Friday. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we did. Oh. Yeah. Take a look at the schedule there and see if maybe we can fit them on after uh, Summit. Okay. Yeah, we can try that. We do a double show on this mm -hmm. Friday if he's, if he's free. Um, yeah. maybe give them a time slot of uh nine fifteen. Yeah, we could nine fifteen would be perfect. Okay. Yeah, we, yeah. We do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll get in contact with you again and uh go from there. So, but yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for being on the show. This is Lennox Leon, guys, and uh, I hope. I hope he, Hope you have a great night and enjoy the rest of your shift. <laughs> thanks, and thanks for having me, too. You bet. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice to meet you through, uh, or, I mean, through video call, but still nice to meet you. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. All right. You have a nice night. You, too. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. All right, guys. Live is ending. Uh, we're going to start another live and uh, do a little pre-show after that. So uh, we'll go from there. Uh, oh, wait, I got to end the live.